Hello and welcome back to Guillotined 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we are going to build off the idea of polarity of molecules and roll into really what is the capstone lesson, or the start of the capstone lesson, it's a two-day lesson, about the idea of intermolecular forces. Uh, you're alive today only because of intermolecular forces, and these are weak physical forces between covalent molecules. And so to do that we have to first just review a little bit about what differentiates covalent compounds from ionic compounds. Remember what makes a covalent compound different is that we don't transfer electrons and that might not sound like a big deal but it is because since we're not transferring electrons we're not creating any ions and if we're not creating any ions we're not making ionic compounds and if we aren't creating ionic compounds then we're not doing crystal lattices and all that other stuff and so what we have are uh, discrete individual molecules that can start interacting with each other um, and, and that's a big difference from a crystal lattice. And again, you've got everybody in the crystal lattice uh, ionically attracted to the ions around it. And so you have strong ionic bonds in, in a three-dimensional arrangement. Um, that makes ionic compounds extremely uh, hard to break apart. Uh, covalent compounds can still have strong intra molecular forces can still have strong chemical bonds, but they, they, they lack that ionic bond between molecules, and what's replaced with is a much weaker physical force, uh, and we call those forces intermolecular forces, just like interstate highways would go between states. And so what an intermolecular force is, it's, it's, it's a weak physical force that exists between covalent molecules. Again, not within. Within we have intramolecular forces, chemical bonds, um, which we spent a lot of time talking about, polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, and ionic. Um, but these are not chemical bonds. These, are, these involve no transfer or sharing of electrons. Uh, really what we have are interactions. I like to say it's, it's kind of like a handshake. Um, you know, so or think of like Red Rover, Red Rover. Um, when you're playing Red Rover, um, between people you have handshakes that hold uh, person to person. And so within a person there's very strong uh, ligaments and muscles and bones. Uh, but between people all we have are little weak interactions. But it, it just like uh, just like anything, a bunch of little guys will add up to something big. Again, one hamster might not be able to take you out, but I'm sure there are some number of hamsters that could put up a very good fight against you. And that's really how intermolecular forces work. If enough, if enough of these match up, um, they, they can be very strong. Um, intermolecular forces uh, will break before chemical bonds are broken, which is one of the reasons why covalent compounds um, tend to have very low melting and boiling points because you're not breaking the chemical bonds at all. And we've talked about this before. What you're really breaking is the weak handshake between the molecules. Again, just like Red Rover. Um, you, you've probably played some Red Rover within your life. And it's, it's you know, when, I've, I've never seen a game played where someone's arm gets ripped off because of someone busting through. Usually what happens is, is the handshake is going to come apart because that's much weaker. So it doesn't mean that you have weak m bones and muscles. It just means that the handshake got separated. And that's... The, like right here is the intermolecular force. So intermolecular forces exist between covalent compounds, um, not within compounds. Those are chemical bonds. So never forget that, uh, you know, little things add up. So, so what we're going to do today is talk about two uh, of the most basic intermolecular forces, and that's the idea of the London force, or some people call it the London dispersion force. Uh, the London dispersion force, or the London force, is the weakest default intermolecular forces. All molecules can undergo London dispersion forces, um, but it's the only intermolecular force that nonpolar molecules can experience, so that's where they get most of the focus. Uh, but again, e polar molecules, anything, can have a London dispersion force. It's just it's usually overwhelmed by stronger forces, um, such as the dipole-dipole force that we'll talk about, or the hydrogen bond we'll, we'll spend a little bit of time on next time. All right. And so what happens in a London dispersion force is that you have uh, nonpolar covalent bonds, each of which, or well, not really even nonpolar covalent bonds, but you have nonpolar molecules where everybody involved ends up having an equal pull on the electron cloud. It ends up being equally distributed, which means there's not much interaction between. Think of this as two boats passing each other on the river with boys and girls, and, and the boys and girls are equally distributed among the two boats. And so they'll go by, and there might be some uh, small pockets of, of boys and small pockets of girls or boys on the other boat, and they might have certain interactions with each other as they go by, but they're temporary and weak and flickering. Um, and so this, you can sort of call this like a temporary dipole from last time. And so with a small flickering force, you're going to have a very weak 
kind of in instant kind of uh, interaction that's going to come and go. It's going to fluctuate. Um, and so uh, these will, though, expand as things get bigger. If you had a much longer boat, you'd have a much more chance of interactions between the two boats as they passed by, even if they were equally distributed based on gender. And so if you had little molecules like methane, uh, methane is a nonpolar molecule, and since it's so tiny, there's really minimal London dispersion forces here. But as the things start to get bigger, um, you're going to see more and more uh, interactions between them due to the fact that these are larger and larger molecules. Now, obviously, the size of the molecule has something to do with it, too. Uh, but the intermolecular forces will increase as there's more chances for them to inter interact with each other. Just like if you were to take your two fingers and rub the tips of them together uh, versus your hands versus burst all of your arms, you, you, you'll get a lot more friction when you rub your forearms together. And that's, that's really kind of what a London dispersion force is. So polar molecules, on the other hand, open up a whole new realm of stronger intermolecular forces. And we touched on this uh, in the last lesson, but remember that nonpolar molecules have an equal distribution of the clouds and therefore uh, equal distribution of charge and not much place to interact. But when you have a polar molecule, you have an unequal distribution of charge, either through electronegativity differences, uh, unbalanced formal charges, or, or geometry, or, or a combination of all of those. And since you have an unequal distribution, as we talked about last time, you're going to end up with partially positive and partially negative parts of the molecule. And the partially negative part will tend to be the more electronegative part of the molecule. And since this is a permanent dipole, these, these dipoles have the ability to interact with each other with something called dipole forces. Um, or some people call them dipole-dipole forces. It's, it's the same idea. And so what happens is those permanent interactions can permanently interact with each other. You know, so if you have a permanent dipole, if permanently one part of your boat has all the boys on it and the other side has all the girls on it, as they pass another boat with all the boys and girls on one side or the other of the boat, uh, you will see uh, stronger interactions between the boats. And so in this case, the partially positive uh, is being attracted to the partially negative. And so what you get is a much stronger intermolecular force. Again, still weaker than chemical bonds, uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, the, these will add up to be something more significant. And notice that since they have a polar part of the molecule, you can certainly also have uh, molecule and ion interactions also. And this is one of the reasons why certain things dissolve in water uh, that doesn't dissolve in something like an oil. Uh, water has a partially positive and partially negative part of the molecule, and that gives an opportunity for things like ions to interact with different parts of the molecules. Um, and so kind of the idea of like dissolves like, and we'll get into more of that uh, when we get to solubility. But nonetheless, um, that was a brief but, but interesting introduction to the idea of intermolecular forces. And what we'll do next time is we'll, we'll finish up with the strongest of all intermolecular forces, and that's the hydrogen bond. Um, again, the only reason we exist today. So hopefully that's a that's an exciting cliffhanger for you there. Um, thanks for watching, and have a great day.